We'll get our uh, Pakistan Bureau Chief Anas Malik back on this broadcast soon for more updates. For now, let's move on. The coalition government in Israel is all set to disband the Knesset. And that would lead to the fifth round of elections in the last three years, which are likely to take place in late October this year. The coalition had extended its timeline to dissolve the government by a day's time for tabling the dispersal bill. That has been granted an exemption from the traditional 45-day waiting period between submission and an initial vote to expedite the process, making way for a bill to disperse the Knesset to be filed in a short while from now. However, both the legislations need to pass four plenum votes and two committee reviews. Procedurally, in Israel, only private bills can be brought to the Knesset floor on Wednesdays. This means that both the bills would need to pass four readings, a preliminary first, second and third round on their way to then becoming law. While the government bills do not need a preliminary vote and only need to pass three hurdles. If these proceedings are carried out as planned, the country's current foreign minister, Yair Lapid, will take over as prime minister next week and will hold the post till elections for the next government can be formed. The Knesset will largely cease to legislate after disbandment. However, the government will remain in place until a new one is sworn in. All this comes after Prime Minister Naftali Bennett and Lapid surprised the nation by announcing their intention to voluntarily disband their government on Monday. They explained the move by saying that there was no way to maintain the current government. לא חסחנו במאמצים על מנת לגייס את מי שנדרש כדי להעביר את התקנות, אבל לצערי מאמצינו לא נסו פרי. על כן, ידידי שר החוץ יאיר לפיד ואני החלטנו לפעול יחד לפיזור הכנסת the Bennett government faced a June 30th deadline to renew a measure that ensures that settlers live under Israeli law. Palestinians in parts of the West Bank are subject only to Israeli military rule. Two Arab lawmakers within the coalition refused earlier this month to recertify the measure, leaving the coalition handcuffed. And since the coalition only controls 60 votes in Israel's 120-seat parliament, dissolving the government before the measure expires means it is automatically renewed until a new government is formed. And for more details, joining us now is our correspondent Jody Cohen, who is live with us from Renana. Jody, welcome to be on. As a vote on dissolving parliament has now been scheduled for later today, what can we expect from the same? Right, so the vote on dissolving the parliament is happening this morning in Israel. And the House Committee, as you said, has exempted the bill from the usual 45-day wait period. Now, it's expected that the voting will be completed, if not today, then by Monday. And the reason that this is being expedited through is because the coalition government, the current coalition government, um, would like to try to stop former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu from forming a government based on the previous election results in what's called an alternative government. Now, in his bloc currently, he has 55 seats, which is far short of the 61 needed for a majority. But the smaller parties in his bloc would prefer to go for an alternative government option. And um, however, leaders of some of the other parties in the coalition presently, the New Hope and the Blue and White Party, they've already ruled out joining a bloc under Netanyahu so it is looking unlikely that that will happen. The vote is expected to pass, and that will mean that Israel will be heading towards elections probably late October or early November. Now, this will be the fifth elections in less than four years, and early polls today have been showing that most respondents would actually prefer to see another election versus the alternate government option. But they also show that there's still going to be continuing deadlock between the pro and the anti Bibi camps, unless, of course, alliances do shift. Right. Jody, also tell us more about the alliances and how could we see those changing as the election campaign progresses? And also, will it be business as usual for the interim government? So, even though the Likud is in the opposition now, they are actually the largest party and they're expected to remain at the largest party with approximately like 30, 35 seats. The coalition that they're expected to bring together on the, from the religious parties, the right-wing parties, is 60. There is an option, potentially, that they might partner with Ram, although they're denying it right now. But Ram has not ruled out joining in with Likud, as Likud look for a wide national coalition. Now, the second largest party is Yesh Atid. They're expected to get 20, 25 seats and to try to pull together a broad coalition, too. But if New Hope don't pass the electoral threshold, 
then they're not expected to get more than 54 seats, which is far short. So we are expecting a realignment. Bennett and Lapids have built up real trust over the last year. Perhaps we're going to see a centre-right party. Perhaps we'll see a realignment of the right-wing parties grouping together under Bennett, Saar and Lieberman. In right. the meantime, it's business almost as usual. There won't be legislative changes, but we do know that uh, security, um, on the security front, they're working on a transition plan. Lapid's Turkey visit is expected to go ahead on Thursday. And of course, President Biden's visit is expected to go ahead in mid-July. Absolutely, Jody Cohen. Thank you so much for all those inputs and thanks for joining us on Beyond World is One at this hour. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.